another beautiful day of timber framing. The last few days we've been somewhat distracted and we haven't been able to make as much progress on this project as we had hoped because we've been working with an excavation contractor to put the conduit in for our power. Even though we hired that project out, we were pretty involved and we didn't have to be involved, but I think sometimes that's a really good idea because it allows you to make decisions on the fly, which we did have to make a couple of those. And we really didn't have a lot of bandwidth left over to be working on this project as well. All that said, it's about one o'clock and we have the rest of the afternoon to probably finish this project. Jesse is doing a flying lesson right now and running some errands, so he's probably out the rest of the day, but that's okay. In our last video, we completed our first two roof braces. Actually, they're not 100, 100% done. We'll share what else we're gonna do to them later. And then we have this puppy over here. I just finished cleaning those two mortises out. And then this piece and that piece, those are actually part of the roof braces as well. So I think it's time to disassemble our timber frame workstation. My goal while Jesse's gone is to go ahead and lay out the joinery, bust out the chain mortiser, get those hogged out, and then complete the mortises and we'll see where we're at. I might even do some test fitting and if they fit, great, and if not, I might see if I can do some troubleshooting to get them to fit. Rumor has it that a storm's rolling in, but it's not here yet. That said, we have quite a bit of rain in the forecast, um, but I don't think we're too worried about it because we have a garage to work in. So just as a reminder, when working with timbers, you want to decide which side's the pretty side, which side should be exposed, and then also you want to take into consideration where you want the joinery, which face that is. This one looks pretty good on both the top and the bottom. I don't mind if either of those are the ones that are exposed. However, it looks like this one's going to have a pretty good knot in, I guess there might be a knot in the mortise, I guess it depends which side we put the five inch mortise and the three and a half inch mortise. So this one could work if we put the long mortise down here and then the shorter mortise up here. I guess this one could be the same. The short mortise can go about right here and then the long mortise can go down here. But if we had the short mortise up here and the long mortise down here, there's a chance that we'd be fighting this knot here. And I can tell you, Trying to chisel around a knot is not very fun. This side is gonna be the side with my joinery. This entire timber looks pretty clean on this end. Oof, watch your fingers. Eh, and that has some knots, some checks, which aren't very fun, and it's not as pretty. So I think that decision's made for me. I have to say, working alone is always a little bit weird. Jesse and I literally spend every waking moment of every single day together. Some of that being in a 19 foot RV. And we love it. We're best friends. I'd say when we're working together, there rarely is silence. We're always talking about what we're gonna do, what order to do, order to do things in, and Jesse makes a lot of these decisions. We definitely talk about them together, but when I'm alone, I have to make all the decisions. I don't have anyone to bounce ideas off of, so it's really quiet. I think this type of stuff is really good for me because Jesse tends to work very quickly. He thinks of things out loud. I work a little more slowly, and I do a lot of my thinking internally. I kind of like when I'm forced to come to conclusions on my own. I think it's a really great challenge for me. Don't tell Jesse. I didn't make it very far. I realize that it's 
really warm outside, like t-shirt weather warm. I have a very small window of warmth and something I've been wanting to do. I decided I was going to do it this winter, but I didn't, is stretch. A very simple pleasure that we've really been missing out on because we don't have a warm, comfortable, clean place to lay down. Believe it or not, you can't stretch much in a travel trailer. There's never a good time for it, so I figure it's probably not going to hurt anything for me to take 20 to 30 minutes and just try to lengthen my muscles a little bit. I honestly feel like the Hulk. I feel like I'm just like huge muscle mass that's just swallowing my soul. And some might think that's a good thing, but I don't feel flexible at all anymore. Um, I feel really don't do like explicit exercise like running. I feel that building the house is exercise, but I think the best thing I could do for my body in addition to eating a reasonably healthy diet is just stretch. So I'm doing it. We'll see if our house doesn't get built because of it. I don't think so. Well, I finally did it. Dang it. Do you see it? Maybe you see it now? You'll see on the right side, I munched off my line. It's not that big of a deal. You're not really gonna see it, but it still frustrates me. This here is the lever that moves the chain mortiser left and right, and after you move it, it's very important to tighten it down. If it's loose, then it has a tendency to bounce this way or that way. So that's what happened. I forgot to tighten it. But I think it could have been a heck of a lot worse. And I think I know precisely why this happened. It's close to 5 p.m. and London Fog 30 hasn't happened yet. We better fix that. I swear guys, I'm normally a workhorse. I normally don't look for every excuse in the book to take a break, but something about the last two days is just really hard for me to get going. I think it's because we work nonstop all day every day. We rarely take breaks. I think during the entire house build from July until the workshop, we took a cumulative two days off where most people have evenings off and then two full days off a week. That's something that we can't relate to at all. So I think that if we have an off day every once in a while, it's okay. What I've been doing with these mortises is I've been, instead of doing one timber at a time, I've been doing certain depths together. So right now I have it set to five and a half inches deep. So I thought I'd do both five and a half inch mortises and then I'm going to set it to three and a half inches deep and I'll do both three and a half inch deep mortises. Is that the best way? I'm not sure. I'm just trying different things, trying to figure out how few times can I move and adjust the chain mortiser. Here's the depth gauge, a pretty low technology piece. One, two, three and a half. And we actually want to go a little deeper than three and a half. So meh, somewhere in there should do.
And Jesse's back. I was flying. And I had a couple people brave enough to jump in the back seat. Yep. And a new instructor. You know what my instructor said today? What? He said, you've been through three instructors already. And I was like, do you think it's my fault? And he's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I was like, but seriously, like, do you think it's my fault? He goes, no. <laughs> Jesse's working on cutting the last how many braces? There's, uh, what do we there's have? still quite a few uh, braces to do. Four to go. I see brace stock behind you. Yeah. So there's two there and then two there, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm hoping I can use the same method that I used before, which is a table saw. So beyond table sawing, then it's just a little bit of like little love, little love until she fits. You've got what, two top pieces left to go? Uh, I have three mortises left. Three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> out of four. Three and a half. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I can power out the braces. So we might have a couple hours of fitment and checking, and then we got to cut the top bevels on all of our yeah. upper pieces. So, eh. Eh. I don't know about one night. I don't know about one night. We're, we're out dinner there too. We yeah. heated the hot tub last night and it's still warm. Guilty. Guilty. So I was just sharing how I'm have, I've been having a hard time the last couple days getting motivated. I don't know that it's motivation. It just feels like there's a lot going on and we don't want to miss this, but this is happening, but this well, is happening. So yeah, I feel when you're, there's, you don't have a lot of bandwidth and stuff's going on. Five or 6 PM rolls around and you're like, man, I don't know that I want to start anything. Yeah. Of course, I felt that at once, so. <laughs> well, we kind, of, we kind of have a rhythm. And I think when we have other people working, they're working on their rhythm. So we have to kind of adjust our rhythm. So it just is weird because normally we just work on our own rhythm. So it's no adjustment necessary. So I just went and checked the hot tub. Would you believe it? The thermometer says 100 degrees. Uh, it's diving into a new cut. Yeah. Yeah, that. The saw looks to me like it was off right here. This saw cut looks like it literally comes up like that. This one actually looks square. Hmm. So I don't know what happened right here. So I almost want to recut. The good news is it doesn't really matter too much because this is the it's going to be, well, so long as it doesn't bottom out, it's fine if it's ugly. Yeah, this is the tenon, so if you want it to be ugly, that's where you want it to be ugly, is on the end of your tenon. Down here on the shoulder cuts, you don't want it to be that way. You want it to be nice and pretty, because those are gonna be finished cuts, so. Still learning how to do this. This is maddening. And when you try to cut through here, the saw, is the, with the hand saw, it's just diving into this opposite cut, and what a mess. Two down, two to go for Alyssa. So the last one I did on the table saw turned out pretty good. I'm learning to kind of fine tune what I'm trying to accomplish with the table saw and I have to adjust it to every single timber and every single end of each timber because the timbers are different widths. So I'm gonna push my luck here and see if we can produce the right tenon on this piece. The last one we made, I had to uh, do a lot of shaving on it. And I think that's because our mortises are so tight that when we produce the tenon correctly, uh, they just don't fit and we end up having to do a lot of chiseling. Of course you want to be able to do that so you can kind of fine tune it for the fit. Anyway, we'll see what happens with this one on the table saw and then we'll kind of make a judgment call about whether we can even do the rest of them on the table saw or we should try to find another way. I made a mistake and somehow, like I just reached down here and I grabbed this brace and it turns out this is the one that I haven't finished this face. 
So in the table saw, it was rocking a whole bunch, and I'm like, what in the world? Like, I just spent a bunch of time flattening that face. And it turns out the one that's on the saw there is the one that I should have been working on. We did end up with a two and a half inch, ish inch, ish inch, inch uh, tenon here. Um, gets a little bit fatter up near the top, and then it's probably a 30 second under down here. So, not perfect, I'll have to check that end. But I just figured out why the table saw is being such a bug. So this, like guard or whatever it is down here, it actually is bent or something, and it's recessed below the table. So I need to move my fence on this side of the blade so that we're using the table over here because you might have heard as I go in, once I get off of this table and I'm over this, the whole piece wants to rock toward the fence, which sucks. And then it catches right here and doesn't want to be level. So it's kind of making a bit of a mess. So I'm going to have to move my whole fence over here and do things that way. How do we do on this side? Yeah, this side's a little bit fat. So I can work on that. I can get that reduced down. This kind of has me worried. We're at an inch and five eighths on that one, and an inch and three quarters, more like inch and seven eighths on that one. Getting no love tonight, no love. So it looks like the blade is tilted this way as I'm going through the wood, which probably goes back to that thing not being flat like the table. They showed us a lot of these more advanced techniques when we did the workshop in Maine. And they let us know that the reason they don't show you power tools first is that it's easy to make big mistakes really fast with power tools. This is a great example. It is faster to do make these cuts, but they're just really difficult to get the precision that you want for these joints. So uh, hopefully I can fix this, get it cleaned up a little bit and make it work. It does make me a little bit apprehensive or hesitant to use the table saw on all these cuts, even though it's obviously saving me a huge amount of time. The question is, is the precision good enough? darn it. I was hoping this one would fit. I think it's really close in here. Looks like maybe just a tiny bit of shaving right in here to get this guy to fit. I didn't want to shave too much until I test fitted it. This one fits good, but it doesn't fit really tight. It fits, but it could be a little bit tighter. So I got a little bit aggressive on that one. And then something's really awry down here. Got a whole chunk missing. And I think Alyssa was worried that she had over uh, mortised this hole, but I think it's under mortised. That are our tenons wildly too large. So it looks like this brace is gonna take a little bit more finesse to get everything to fit good. But once she's done, that's three done. Well, I think tomorrow um, I'm gonna try to fine tune my table saw strategy. And then I know Alyssa wants to lay out one of these braces. Um, she didn't want me to do them all. And uh, actually, I think I did get involved in the top pieces, so I got to do one of those. So Alyssa's done nearly all of them. 
Um, so maybe with her help tomorrow, well, <laughs> we'll see. We're supposed to get a half an inch of rain overnight, and then it's supposed to rain through Friday a couple of days from now. So uh, this may be a soggy mess out here. We may not be able to use power tools and things because it's raining from above. So we'll see. Um, we're hoping to get this thing hammered out. We've still got a bunch of work to get done to get ready for the sips. And I think it's been pretty helter-skelter. We have both have felt kind of foggy uh, the last few days with this project and that project going. We feel very kind of divided with our attention. Um, anyway, it feels good to get this stuff done. Alyssa's already in the hot tub, so I think I'll join her. We'll see you guys tomorrow.